I have an adorable nine week old Labradoodle puppy here and would love some tips on teaching her slowly to be alone. At the moment, as soon as she hears the door of the living area where she is staying until her vaccines, then she'll be allowed in the rest of the house when we can start doing outdoor potty training. We'd we'll love for her to be familiar and comfortable with being alone from, an early, from early on, but she doesn't keep herself entertained very long yet. Sorry, I meant as soon as she hears the door, she reacts. Oh, okay, so you're probably getting maybe even a little bit of separation anxiety, mm -hmm. and I'm sure it's not full blown yet. It's just puppies spending a lot of time with their owners. And they feel, yeah, they feel like they have to be with you all the time because that's what they're used to. That's pretty normal, guys. So one thing I usually say is maybe the living room area might be a little too busy for a young puppy. I try to find a spot in the bedroom, put them in a crate there. I'm quiet to, room. Yeah, quiet side room. Side room, giant walk-in closet. Mm -hmm indirect noise so like a, a fan Bathroom. maybe blowing against the wall a little white noise machine something that gives them their spot i cover it with the towel to simulate darkness puppies are used to sleeping throughout the day if they were with their mother they'd sleep 18 hours a day so we have to kind of simulate that situation a crate area or a playpen we prefer crate but playpen also works if you're in a pinch and then put a towel on top of it to create that darkness make some noise like a white noise machine just to drown out all the outside noise a white noise machine or a fan plus yeah, fan works too um, a radio, talk radio, can be really, really helpful. What about Friends? I thought Friends was your show. I mean, it is. So honest to God, guys, if you could play like a sitcom that just keeps going and going and going, um, some type of sitcom like Everybody Loves Raymond or Friends where it's just a group of people talking constantly, uh, we've actually found that to be really useful. Most of the dogs like Phoebe. Something about the high-pitched voice. It's just kind of what they did. <laughs> just saying. But anyway, it makes them feel not so alone. Um, if your puppy is not chewing like crazy yet, uh, you could try to uh, go ahead and give them a nice like nesting area with several towels But if they're chewing and ingesting things you, you can't do that, but that can make them feel more comfortable um, The other thing is is your puppy getting tons of attention and cuddles and stuff like that when you bring them out of crate because that's going to be a long-term issue if you're like oh come here and it's lots of holding and loving and petting he'll never be okay alone ever <laughs> why would they want to be alone yeah. when, when they're with you they get so much affection so you got you've got to be that um i hate this has become such a buzz buzzword but before it was a buzzword it was a good word you've got to be that calm confident pack leader and dog, a puppy even nine week old puppy pauses before they come out of crate invite them out very matter of fact good puppy let's go outside or where, wherever you're doing your potty spot potty chance good let's work for food sit good job so you've got that working relationship then some earned affection calm affection not crazy excited um, and then maybe some structured play a little bit more work a little bit of downtime free time and then back in crate very matter of fact like so when it comes to crate whining and things like that, what you actually do with your puppy when they're not in crate is how it affects how they behave in crate. If I yeah. Yeah, said that. And you right. hear that? No kisses on the head before going in crate. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's the hardest thing. I know, I and know. It's, it's like sometimes, sometimes people ask me, well, can I tell my dog I'll be right back? Because that worked with my last dog. I swear I've had three people tell me that in mm -hmm. six months. Well, first of all, is a dog, not a puppy, so so that changes things. And if you were gonna say something, it'd be like, settle down, I'll be back in a minute, Listen, settle that down. that tone, that tone is everything. To be kind is clear, and or to, sorry, to be clear is kind, and if you sound emotional at all, or soft, to a puppy, they don't know what you're saying, so to a puppy, it sounds like you want to come to you, and they can't, they can't get out of this crate, so, 15 minutes before you put your puppy away. Don't do any like, oh, I'll be all softness and, and good puppy, and, or, and don't do any of the, I'll be back, it's okay, because they don't know what you're saying. All they sense is that, that positive softness coming out of you, that nurturing coming out of you, which they think means you want them to be close to you. It's very confusing for, for puppies. So. I know it sounds harsh, but it's like, you're fine, here's your potty, here's your crate, shut the door, see you later. I also like to use the playpen in that last 15 minutes before going in the crate. I feel neutral. the playpen helps. Yeah, it's neutral. neutral. It's basically exactly the same thing. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that? No, no. Okay. I mean, I won't talk about how much I don't really love the playpen, but we'll, we can move on. We're, we're not huge fans of the playpen. You but are. I like it for certain things. For young puppies, <laughs> it's really beneficial because sometimes people want them in the... I'm not getting into this. <laughs> Jeez. Jesse says, oh my god, such great advice, come train my hubby. <laughs> you couldn't pay us enough. 
<laughs> All right, and I we have one more from uh, Julie Pooley. Trained Love mine. That. I trained mine. All right, go ahead. Don't tell Kimberly that. <laughs> All right, we have Julie Pooley, and it's a similar question, which is why I'm going to skip a few of the other ones and come back full circle. Okay. So, how to acclimate puppy to being calm in crate for naps and nights, screen through hours. So Aww. very similar. I know that that one's actually we deal with that a ton because it is separation anxiety in the climate too that we're in. They spend all day long with a lot of owners. So maybe that's kind of your situation at home as well. And they don't want to sleep in the crate. So one, I think covering the crate is a huge thing. But what Bethany mentioned uh, previous was no affection before we're going into the crate. No, if, if he's screaming at night, there's already some huge problems here. It could be um, a genetic component as well. Like oh, she's struggling more pleasure. than the average puppy. So I would, I would, instead of what I said, the earned affection and no affection 15, 20 minutes, no affection for one week. I'm not telling you that's gonna fix things. That's not what I'm saying. But let's just try it and, and see what happens. You, you're, you put your trainer hat on and you are, um, you can have a little emotion when working with food, like, like let's go, good job. But there's no softness, no affection for one week. See if it helps a little bit. If it doesn't help, forget, forget what we say, you know, and, and, and try something else. But I would, I would just try it, and I would try to have more of a working relationship with your dog. Um, what are some things we can do to make it more comfortable in crate? You said the cover crate. I like to cover the crate. I like to play the music. But also, are you creating throughout the day? Because sometimes people yes. create just at night. It, it can be a scary thing for them. They're not used to it. So also, the daytime creating is a lot easier that if you need to ignore it for a couple hours and maybe even give a firm tap on the crate, hey, cut it out, settle down. Not the dog, the crate. <laughs> We have to say it again, make sure I'm gonna look from Ricky. But that is an easy way of settling the dog down and disagreeing with the barking, with the behavior. But if you're sharing any softness with them outside of crate, that's not fair. Just for now, just just give me, give me a we week. We know what we're asking to, a week of no it's affection. Hard. It's hard. Puppy. She's actually being nice. Normally it's two weeks. Yeah, no, so, well, I don't know, we gotta build a relationship first. Trying to be nice, trying to be nice. I just want we you know to see, asking, though. It's see hard. if it helps. It's see challenging. If it helps. Do some mental work. Don't just, you know, go go on YouTube and look up, you know, different things to work with on a dog. Not tricks. Don't do tricks. That's drive. Um, something hard like uh, targeting place 10 times, place and break, place and break, place and break. Now use body language to help them stay on place and then break and then have them jump up on things. If you've got like a footstool or, or maybe you don't want them on the footstool, but um, like a folding chair, uh, get them outside working. Uh, Cause whenever they have distractions and they have to focus on you, even if you're using heavy food lore, which is totally fine, it's more mental work. Maybe his day is too easy and he's got a lot of pent up. It seems like he's got pent up energy and you think you need to do more fetch and more exercise when he actually needs more mental challenges, but not trick training, more like impulse control, mental Obedience challenges. Work. Obedience, Obedience work. Obedience work, yeah, with I, mental. With, I want your uh, opinion on something too. So normally when people are like working on a place command, they want to keep their dog on place. They come in when the dog comes off to push them back with move, their hands. Move in, yeah. so, but let me ask you this. If a dog's already developing separation anxiety, I like to pull away from the hands. I use more of a leash guidance in my body, but not my hands. Well, the, on that. the only reason I did that is because I'm on camera sitting down. So you, would, you wouldn't use hands for body language. You'd be standing up. Your puppy is on place. A cot is really good for this. Um, we love to use cots because you can catch them stepping off really quick. And Dusty, Dusty, hi. Looking so sure. that is not totally what I wanted. Um, but anyway, if I just do hands, it becomes like this fight. But if I stand up, hey, move him off of me. Should have known that was going to happen. Got your mic really stuff. move him off. Use my uh, use my legs. That's way more way more beneficial. Shouldn't know that was gonna happen. But anyway, that's how you wanna approach that is you wanna use way more body language um, with your lower body. You see how quick he hopped off of me and took my microphone with me? Um, it's cause he knows. Like he knows if I move in, it means back off. If I kind of do this, we play. It's a give and take. We play and we kind of rough house and he doesn't know I'm being serious. And so that's really the big, the big switch is you can go ahead and do that. You go to the front door step into your dog to kind of block them from going out and get their attention, then sit good food. You know, start using more body language with your dog to work them more mentally. And Bethany also said something that was really interesting to me. The trainer hat, 
She said, put on your trainer hat. That basically means go into work mode. Yeah. There may be other points in the day for you guys know, but for other owners where you can be a little bit softer, but when you get in that training mode, hat goes on, all right, let's get it done. We're business mode, we're work mode. And then later on, the dog's sleeping on the floor or something, you can soften with them a little bit at the end of the night when they're tired and they're already been mentally stimulated. After your week of no affection. Yes. Try it. Well, just, say, just, for them, yeah, they gotta do the full week. Yeah, but for, but other for others. Owners, that's kind of how I apply to you guys. Okay, uh, Carol says, I don't have a question, but I wanna thank you so much for taking your time to answer all your questions. Thanks, thank Carol. you, Carol. You. You've helped me so much and I implement your recommendations with great results. Thank you so much for watching, Carol. Uh, Sandra says, any tips for our eight-week-old quiche? Oh, cool, a quiche on. I haven't seen one of those in a while. She's our third pup um, of this breed. Uh, she has a 10-year-old amazing quiche on sister. Uh, she seems to be modeling our older dog nicely, who's trained and listens. Okay, Riley, the pup, five days they've had her. She's good um, at going at, at asking to go outside. So uh, maybe great with bedtime crates. Scratching crate. the door, potty bell, something like that, I'm guessing. How long until she finds her groove? in the house uh i would say okay i would say your expectations not to be mean sandra like i'm just saying your expectations are a little high for the age of your pup for how long you've had your pup we don't actually let dogs tell us when they need to go outside um a lot of times puppies for her to even be doing good that percentage Eight of the time That's i'm incredible. kind of shocked yeah and, and not to be negative you've had these these dogs before these breeds before so You've kind of already been through this, but a lot of times there's gonna be a big backslide, you know, once they get more comfortable with the family, because they're not gonna to wanna to leave the family around the 12 week mark to, to go outside and, and do that. So I would go ahead and you be the person to take your dog outside, your puppy outside on a schedule, and then, then they'll pick up more and more over the course of the next few months when to go to the back door to let you know. But I wouldn't give your puppy that much power right now. Um, she can go outside with your other dog, but also give her just at least a few times a day. You take the puppy to the back door, sit and wait, go outside, potty, three to five minutes potty, come back in. Um, I would do that. I'm curious about the find a groove in the house. So it sounds like you're not getting potty accents, all right? Seventy-five percent of the time, doing okay. Okay, so that so the other twenty-five, that's the groove. The yeah, potty it's, it's kind of, that's kind of amazing. Just so you yeah, know. eight week old puppy. I'd say that we get probably three percent of them normally doing what your dog is doing at eight weeks yeah. old. They're barely doing that at twelve weeks. Which old, is probably the ten-year-old in the house helping yeah. out. But, but just standard. just keep just keep that in mind. Just keep plucking away, and don't be surprised if you see a backslide. And when you do, you have to be more in control of taking them out double the amount of time mm -hmm. for like three weeks. Then they'll fall back into their old groove again. Remember, so. guys, if you want a potty schedule, you want the structure schedule that we use. DM us or PM us or whatever the DM is. DM, thank you. thank you. Yep. And then we'd be happy to send you one. And sometimes you can even customize that to what you're already doing with your puppy. So when they would normally alert you, you take them out five minutes before that. You set that routine of them looking to you and you following through with that. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of attach this to my hair. There we go. Okay. All right. How can I stop my energetic puppy from digging in my plants? Sounds like your puppy's got too much access, unfortunately. Digging's a really natural behavior. You could get like a little area where he's allowed to dig and then everywhere else, um, he's either gotta be on leash or you have to put up things to where he can't get into for now. I don't have an age. I mean, in, just in general though, don't go down the rabbit hole for this when people got crazy ideas, bury cinder blocks in his holes and bury poop. And then you have a dog running poop through your whole house. Don't, don't go down the rabbit hole. Yeah. More boundaries. Put them on a leash when they're outside, block the areas that they're digging in, but even there, it's still a crutch because eventually they're gonna get past that, they're gonna get through it, or you're gonna forget it, and they're gonna dig more holes. You gotta nip it in the bud yep. by blocking the opportunity. Preventing, preventing yes, the habit from getting any any worse. Give them an area, if they're really avid diggers, if you've got like some dachshund or something, you better get like a little dig area and you say no for you know digging in this area and redirect them to another area. If this puppy is over six months old, you can correct them, so. But you still need to give them an outlet for it, I think, I, I think it's nice. All right, anyway, anything else? No, it's what are you just laughing at me for? The outlet part, that kills me, okay. They're dogs, they like to dig, give them an outlet. Why does that kill you? Why, why? No, explain it to me, I would like to know. We would all like to know. The outlet kills me because, I don't know, it just, I feel like halfway we're promoting it, halfway we're letting it go. My personal opinion is, no digging. I think if it happens one place, it happens every place. 
he's not wrong with some dogs, but I've worked with dogs before and I've seen other dogs learn that they can dig in a certain spot and then they get in trouble for digging in other spots. And they, they, it takes time, but they figure that out. But I, there are lots of trainers with his point of view. It doesn't make it right. But there are lots of we trainers with We will agree to disagree, but we are strong individuals and we have our own opinions. <laughs> The, the best thing you can do is you can put five trainers in a room and put a dog in front of them and every single trainer will have an exact different, different opinion. yeah different opinion. But no, try, try both solutions. Try what Bethany said. If it works, awesome. If it doesn't, I mean, play around with it. Yeah. No, no perfect solution is going to be a perfect solution because it doesn't exist. It's different for every dog. Okay. All right. Vicky says, my dog is one year old male. Australian Shepherd, um, he's jumping up on everyone. How can I make him stop? Thank one you year for old. age. Thank you for breed. Yeah. We appreciate you. One, <laughs> one year old dog is totally different than a 16 week old dog. That's what he's trying to say. I mean, I would just put him on a leash and say no and correct him. And then I would tell yeah. people to be calmer when approaching. I would coach the person on how to interact with my dog. If someone is really excited, pet, 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 um, my dog's probably gonna jump up. It's a really high level of advanced obedience to have someone, my dogs don't even do that, um, to have someone excitedly pet your dog and the dog not jump up. It's a really high level of advanced obedience. The only dog I've had to do that with is Dakota because she's so big. But my other dogs, I'm just like, who, I mean, there's a lot of time that goes into, into that. That's like a high level of proofing. So I always coach people and to a really, I don't mind telling people what to do. So to a really high level of, of expectations. And if the person can't do it, I'm just like, okay, dog, come back, sit. Can't say hi to my dog. I don't say that, but you know, what do you think? Boxers, I think, are a whole different type of animal. Oh, this is when it Aussie. Comes to that. Was it Aussie? I thought yeah. she said boxer. Sorry. Aussie, Australian Shepherd. Oh, then everything she said. I thought it was a boxer. <laughs> what were you going to say if it was a boxer? Uh, that there's six, no hope? There's six no hope. months to a year of doing minimal, I mean, like 4% of the time, of actually allowing them to say hi. Just bypassing almost every situation like that, getting oh. used to ignoring, yeah. and when they completely ignore existing. and they look to you, existing. Thank you, resilience work. When they get used to you being the only thing that exists on a walk, then you might start introducing yeah. it. We want you to be the first person of value. We don't want your dog to seek value in other things going on around them. In order to do that, you have to be around a million different things and not allow your dog to interact. Not with dogs, not with people. That's how you get a really well mannered dog. I just worked with a client over the weekend. Uh, hopefully, they're they're all they've been watching a few of ours. Grady, if you guys are watching, uh, when I first worked with their dog, he won he wanted to say hi to everyone. He was used to saying hi to everyone. So I gave him one hour of not saying hi to a single person on our walks. I found a bench I sat down with it. I walked the green belt. I went around every single person that I saw. After about 35 minutes, he was like, Sparky, what the heck is going on here? But for the next 20 minutes, I was the center of his universe. End of the walk, we saw a little old lady that she, I could tell she kind of knew him a little bit because she, she was already moving. No, she was already going across the street. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, when he sat there calmly, she actually felt comfortable enough to walk up and say hi to him, not touch him. I wouldn't allow her to do that. But it was a really cool thing to see her level of comfort around this dog. Whereas before, you could tell she didn't have that at all yeah. because she understood that he was walking for me. He wasn't out to say hi to everyone and pull towards that goal. Yeah. And the, other, the only other thing I would add to that is um, when you get like alert ears, like Dusty's ears go very alert when he sees a squirrel, that's when I say no. Like, hey, no, cut it out. Don't, don't even entertain that thought that you're gonna go find the squirrel. So it's the same thing, come here bud, I was just kidding. Um, it's the same thing when uh, your dog is looking at a person that makes eye contact with them, hey, settle down. Like just interrupt that cycle of arousal to make really, really clear that that's not gonna happen. <laughs> it's not gonna happen for them. That's always the best, that's your learning moment, or excuse me, that's their learning moment and your teaching moment is to catch them early in that cycle of arousal. If they're already jumping like crazy, you, you kind of kind of lost your learning moment, teaching moment. And I know it's hard with the people too. The people it's are just as people. bad. They approach, yeah. they try to pet them. If I see a person, I can usually tell which ones want to pet my dog or pet the dog that I have. I'm already kind of moving out to the side. No, oh, we're training. Have a good day. Yeah. Thank you so much. So beautiful dog. I know. Have a good one. Bye. And at the same time, when the dog is craning their neck at someone he's talking to, he's using his leg to like move into them to be like, nope, not happening. No, sorry, we're training. Nope, not happening. Yep. So it's a lot of multitasking. It spatial takes pressure. takes practice. Yeah, spatial pressure. Okay. So we have yeah. questions come into Instagram, and while you're sitting through that, I'm gonna read out a couple TikToks for you. Let's okay. Do it. So TikTok, what is the most popular breed we have here? Right now, doodles, for sure. 
and, actually, and it's golden doodles retrievers. All the time. And golden yeah. retrievers. And labs. Yeah. Goldens, oh, yeah, labs, 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 doodles. Too. I'd say doodles more than anything. That's probably three quarters of our dogs. Um, they come in waves though. Like we have yeah. about four huskies. Next month, maybe we'll have six Aussies. Like we, it, it's we, weird. It's like the breeders collect and say, "All right, Buck Academy, yeah, take in there." And we won't see a border collie for six months, and then we'll mm -hmm. have three in a row. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. Is it hard to train an older, an uh, old small dog to go into a travel bag? The only thing that's hard about training older dogs is the fact that the people don't change. And yeah. so there's this saying that says an old dog, you know, can't learn new tricks. It's actually the people and the environment, the old people, old people, sorry, the people, <laughs> the people who have been around and the old environment that can't learn new tricks. So my point is if, if you gave that dog to someone else and that dog, that person immediately started working on get in here for food, good, the dog would probably pick it up two, three times faster. And so don't take that offensively. That's just how it is. So, you know, how much have you asked your dog to do in the past? You know, if you guys do a lot together and you do targeting for place and you do um, a lot of new stuff, then it won't be an issue at all. If your dog just kind of lazes around the house most of the time because it's cute and older and easier, then yeah, it might be a bit of a challenge, but I would build up food drive and start there. Food and leash, just honestly like with a puppy. Food leash commands, get them in the, get them yeah. in the bed. Yeah. Can, you want me to jump into these? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, All right, Gatsby says, four weeks old and I love to jump. Oh, I'm um, the dog. I'm 12 weeks old and I love to jump and bite my humans, but my shark doodle teeth are sharp and they don't like it. How do they help me stop by telling you no? <laughs> telling you no, stepping in, being firm, like, using hey, the leash, and cut it out. Of pressure. Leash, yeah, this is a really young dog, so the leash is really good as backup. Um, so you can be like, hey, no, little leash guidance out, then sit food. But here's the thing, the, the obedience on the backside of that no, the redirection to a toy or to obedience that you hear other trainers talk about, redirect your dog, redirect your puppy. That doesn't work if you, ha if you haven't, sorry. A pushy puppy. Yeah, a pushy puppy. It doesn't yeah. work if, um, if you haven't put in the work. I'm not trying to be mean, I don't know. Maybe your parents have put in the work, Gatsby. But if you don't spend five to 10 minutes a day, really um, building some food drive and sit, break, place, break, and do 30 repetitions of some of the same things day in and day out, then you don't have anything, to, oh, sorry, but you don't have anything to redirect to. So you can say no all you want, but it, the puppy will just be like, well, what do I do with myself? Yeah. The biting was fun. <laughs> you have to be more valuable than anything else. Because here's the thing, if you bring out a, out a treat, but the dog's just been jumping and biting at you and you make noise of, ah, ah, now your dog playing, and most dogs aren't going to come to you for food when they're in the middle of a play session. I like my little. I uh, know that was great. It was Sounded like a right? like a little girl's great actor. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but you're you like, like no puppy sit or the leash. <laughs> hey, puppy sit. Good food. Come sit. Food. Come sit. Food. Calm. Walk away. You know. So that's just kind of how that cycle has to go. Say you can say no. There's like puppies already know what no means before they come to us and then they come to us and nobody uh, nobody wants to say no to their puppy or they don't know how you can say no and have a firm tone and just use some body language or some leash pressure but they have a three second rebound rate right so they jump right back into it that's where the redirection comes into play so i know you're probably looking online and getting tons of uh only redirect your puppy don't say no it's damaging or just tell your puppy no and then they keep doing it and they get frustrated and you get frustrated that's because you gotta have both. You gotta have both. We you gotta think. Have a we relationship. think. Yeah. That's what if we think. If the relationship doesn't exist, why would an animal want to listen to you? Yeah. You have to be the leader before anything else, and leadership is created through bonding and setting boundaries. Was, and I was just getting ready to say, part of bonding is not just food and fun; mm -hmm. it's also boundaries. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. One year old. One year old. Two and a half year old. They are trying. Oh, Gatsby says they are trying. And thank you. I'll tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate Mom it. says no and does make me sit. Excellent. You know, let me add one more thing to, to Gatsby's uh, before we add in an older dog question. Um, I would say, and I, I'm not trying to pick on your parents, Gatsby, but I would say that I would try to watch how you're interacting with your puppy. Whenever you pet them, are you like going right for the face and you're like, oh, and then they nip you and you're like, no, sit, right? So how is your energy affecting your puppy? Maybe don't go for the head 
right away, but go more for the shoulder and do more slow fingers. Yeah, slow fingers, not quick fingers because petting causes stimulation. This is your line, which I'm, I'm the one who says it all the time now. Um, petting causes stimulation. And then when they're calm and their tail's not going a mile a minute, then work your way up to a little bit of head and face. But the moment they go, stop, stop touching the face. Dogs this don't always want to be touched. They don't always want to be pet. They live in a world of being overstimulated 24-7. Yeah. So you're trying to work through that stimulation and not lower it. You can never really lower it, but you put it in the channels. Yeah. Think of it like a little atom bomb. It's always blowing up in their head. So you're yeah. taking that energy, come, sit, down, stay, heal, drop it, leave it, fetch. All that energy finds a channel and then it no longer wants to bite you. <laughs> but I think that's, that's a big factor in for everybody. Um, it just keep that in mind. When we say no and then redirect, we also want you to pay attention to how your energy and your interactions are affecting your your dog. If I push Dusty right now because I've played with him roughly, he'll growl and come back at me and be ready for roughhousing. And so just just really know you know how how your touch, how your energy, how your tone affects your puppy. I just came across a lady the other day that if she raises her tone to her 12 week old puppy, her puppy is so nervous of raised voices, which is really difficult in this household. And so everyone's having to be really conscious of that and they're actually doing more buttoning up their mouth and doing more body language stuff and it's working so much better because the dog is so sensitive to raised voices for some reason so every every dog is different play around and see see what what works okay uh d modak d modak has a one year old we do have a two and a half year old question i'm afraid i'm gonna skip over that because you're you're no longer in puppy territory i'm really sorry about that um d modak one year old border collie that's nervous cautious of big dogs but aggressive towards smaller dogs. So one year old, border collie, uh, nervous, cautious of big dogs and aggressive towards. So the reason he's nervous of big dogs is because he's aggressive. And he's acting aggressively. So the dog is bigger. So instead of acting aggressively like he's in charge with the little dogs, the big dogs are making him show why he's aggressive, which is because he's insecure. So what do, what do they, what do? They do? Ooh, oh, she's gonna put her right <laughs> on the plate. I hate it when I do it. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. So, what do you do, Sparky? <laughs> <laughs> so, a lack of confidence. So, when you have a dog that has a lack of confidence, big dog, they show submissiveness because they know they can't take them. Little dog, they show dominance because they know they can take them. Napoleon it's, uh, posturing, yeah, Napoleon, Napoleon complex. complex. So, one, eliminate all situations where they have to posture. They're no longer saying hi to dogs on the walk. They're no longer trying to have play dates with them. You are building up their confidence in a solo situation. You need to become everything. No, no, I'm doing this, this right now. I'm doing this. Put it in my court. It actually, uh, something happened similar to my dog. I was at the dog park one day when I first got her. I know, bad spark. You shouldn't have done dog park. No dog park. But she actually got attacked really, really badly. And um, there was, it was a whole situation. She got, she got hurt pretty badly. And after that, you need dog training. You need to think perfect dog no matter what situation. She started showing aggressions to smaller dogs and being afraid of bigger dogs. Your exact same situation. What I did was I eliminated all greetings for a minimum of six months. No more play dates. She could see dogs on the walk, but I'd keep going. And I built up her nervous, confidence. Nervous, nervous of men and was growly when I first got him. So six months. No one pet him. If somebody came up and said, yeah. oh, what a nice, go away. Go like, oh, I'm sorry, we're training. We're training. He's you are not, building up your own friendly. dog's confidence. Yeah. You're, tra you're literally training your dog for six months to look to you for everything. Because you control the environment. Mm -hmm. And if you ever start introducing other things like I did, actually I did about a year and a half later, not even right away. I really trained my dog to look to me for everything to dad will advocate i don't need to say hi to this dog or try to go for this dog or try to play with this dog did you use food right away no yeah I, see a I lot of times you food. can't a it lot yeah you can't use it. it she was too nervous it yeah. was all leash guidance and same with him it was months of just leash guidance and and us dictating i say us and put you in the same camp us exactly. dictating Thanks. where they go see a dog let's go bubble out and around cross the street turn around look to me calm confident leadership it was months before i could even do counter conditioning with food with him with men of being around especially men looking what's at our him. what's our person's name dina d d modak i don't know d modak and i'm gonna be real with you man this that's is, just the beginning stage. This is not something that you can do on your own. And this is not oh, something that a, a conversation with us that's is going to help. You've got to get a trainer. 
Eight. Hours, hour, like this is what you could do. If you go down the YouTube rabbit hole, you're looking at hours and hours and months of research. Hours to, and hours a day. To do this, um, to do this on your own, you know? So not to be negative or anything, but this is a big issue. But I hope that gives you some ideas, you know? Um, we say it to help you because we want to make sure that you can get help for yourself and your yeah. dog. It does take a lot of time. It's rehabilitative work. It's not mm -hmm. basic obedience or even advanced obedience. Yeah. It's straight up what Bethany does in her business and what I do in you my do business too, yeah. and what Puppy Academy doesn't do. So it's not really a question for them, but it's something that you can find a trainer for one-on-one -on -one who does rehabilitative work to help you. Yeah. Perfect, guys. All right, guys, we are going to go and we'll see you next week. Same time. And one o'clock Wednesday. And remember, Pacific questions. Time. Send it through Instagram DM. You can throw it in the chat. You can throw it in pretty much any way of getting a hold of us. We'd love to answer it for you guys. Thank you for joining. Thanks, guys. Bye.